You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. This is the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. From 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. It's fun. They're amazing. We missed you, Gurdeep. I'm so glad that you're back. <laughs> <laughs> we also got it on the text line a lot. People are like, when is Gurdeep coming back? Which I think is probably a sign of, Pooja, you're talking too much. <laughs> we need Gurdeep back. <laughs> I miss you guys too, but I probably spent way too much time thinking about the show while I was away. And uh, you'll have to forgive me. I'm a little rusty this morning. I was gone for a week and I forgot how to radio. <laughs> I'm like, how do I, where do I plug my headset in? It's all tangled. I'm I like, saw you I- struggling with your headphones <laughs> and I, I kind of chuckled to myself. I'm like, really? You, you go away for five days and you don't know how to work a headphone? Well, hear me out. I didn't have to talk much on vacation because I was gone by myself. Oh, and nice. I spent a lot of time just in silence. When I got back, I was like, how do I do this again? How do I talk? How do I talk to people? <laughs> and the only things that come out of your mouth is like, mm, croissants. Because I just imagine like, you did a lot of that. Room service. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so if, for people who are not familiar, let me bring you up to speed on Gurdip's travel history. So Must we? Well, only because you seem to be fully intact. But if people don't know, uh, one of the trips you went on with your friends. This you were, year. This year, you were on a plane that had a very scary moment where it felt like the plane was going to go down. Like you all thought the plane was going to go down. It was very scary. It was traumatizing. It was. Yeah. We were nose diving for like 30 minutes and oxygen mask came down. They didn't tell us what was happening. Um, thanks flair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay. Redeem yourself. You went away skiing. Yeah. This was supposed to be the trip to sort of cleanse the palate yeah. from the traumatic experience. I went skiing in Vermont and, um, was on a hill that was too steep for my beginner <laughs> no. skill set, and I fell, and I went one way, my leg went the other, and I snapped, tore my ACL, which <sighs> is a one-year recovery, which I'm still recovering from. Yeah, not good. Uh-huh. Okay, now you this? went to St. Lucia. Mm-hmm. What happened? I went skydiving. <laughs> Parachute didn't open. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Is this the Gurdip ghost of Christmas past? <laughs> ghost Gurdip is really good at radio. The Pooja and Gurdip show. Tinder has released its most huh. used emoji for 2023. And I know you're not on Tinder, Gurdip, but if you were and you were going to use an emoji, what would that emoji be? I don't think I'm allowed to say it on the air. <laughs> right. It's not the obvious ones that people are thinking, okay? Uh, so it's not those. It's not the eggplant emoji. It's not the peach emoji. Whoa, whoa, it's whoa. Not... I was talking about a smiley face. Let's keep it clean. <laughs> it's not the one with like this cool sunglasses. Any guesses? So this is the most used emoji on Tinder yeah, so for 2023. People so res- people are flirting, talking, getting to know each other. Yes. Is it the smirk face? You know, the... <laughs> The smirk, the sly smirk, like I I know. I can see you using that one. I do love a sly smirk. I don't think I use it right, though. (laughs) No, no, that's not it. And it's not the eyebrow one, you know, where you have like a one eyebrow up, one Uh, eyebrow down. There are so many emojis. Boss and Blair, producer Steph, just help me chime in here. Most used emoji on Tinder in 2023. Should this be the nearly impossible question? Uh-huh. <laughs> I think it's I think it's Googleable. Did oh, you okay. say the wink with the kissy face? Uh no. Good oh. good guess though. Okay. That's not it. Also, you guys haven't met yet. Why are you already doing kissy faces? I don't know. I'm just swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder, yeah. apparently Tinder you don't need to meet. You just start flirting and there you go. Is it and the poop emoji? It is not the poop <laughs> emoji. <laughs> the fire emoji? No. The poop plus the fire emoji. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not getting a date, by the way, if you're doing the, that. Is it the chili pepper? No. Is it the, is it the rarely used gondola ride? <laughs> hey, first date, gondola ride? Uh, what is about it the clown face? <laughs> it's the most used emoji, <laughs> not the rarely used. Gondola rides are underrated, okay? <laughs> okay, everybody get out your phones and think, look, even look at your own most used emojis. You know where it the says? recently used? The recently used. What Mine's you, a heart. Okay. Uh, is it sun, wave, palm tree? Sorry, I was just on vacation. <laughs> Margarita? Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what it is. because Give us a clue. No. no, there's no way you're going to get it. I promise you, you have never used this emoji. It's None the of fairy. Us. Is it the fairy? No. Uh, oh, so so Gondola's the, looking pretty good now. Is it yeah. the laughing kitty? <laughs> <laughs> the tears coming out of its With eyes? the tears. Well, boss man, why is that the most used on your no, phone? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, the magician's hat? No. Would you like to know what it is? Hey, baby, you want to see a trick? (laughs) 
no. Okay, I promise you, it's not one you've used. Maybe it's a sign that Gen Z has come up with this, and we're just not in the know. Okay, it's the always on emoji. Type in always on if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's the word on, and then above on, it's got two arrows. Like, it, basically saying... I searched for that, nothing came up. Always on, or put in on. Oh, is it oh. that? Is it that? Uh, yeah, that's it. What? Yes, that's on it. So it's an exclamation boy? No, just O-N, oh, and then on top of it, point. there's that, that, an arrow. That means always on? And so it, it, what it means is you're ready to try new things. You're ready to explore maybe a new relationship. So basically, it's the arrow equivalent of the smirk face. <laughs> like, hey, you want to try that? <laughs> yeah, now, I I clicked it. now it's on my most used. I'm never going to use that. No, you guys have to be more open and optimistic because <laughs> that's what it means, and all the Gen Zers are using it. You guys don't know anything about how to meet people and connect. Obviously. I'm going to send you that today. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an always off I can use? <laughs> the Pooja Inger Deep Show. From 98.1 CHFI. So my mother-in-law has been staying with us. Uh, she stayed with us for Ooh. a full week. Ooh, fun. Yes. Usually when she comes over, she stays for a couple of days. She brings her overnight bag. This time she stayed for a full week. And it was just so lovely to have her with the kids. The kids got to be around her and she got to be around them. Which That's is nice. Just so nice for yeah. them to bond. I will say, though, uh, she's nine, almost 90. Wow. And she doesn't get out much. So I, when it comes to, I guess, sort of, you know, being able to get things for herself, she doesn't really do that anymore. So she kind of relies yeah. on my brother-in-law who she lives with and, you know, other family members. So anyway, she came over and it was really great. Um, and she, she said to me, uh, you know, in Bodhi's room, because that's where she's staying, she's like, I saw there's some coconut oil. And I'm like, mm-hmm. She's like, I put it in my bag. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I'm like, oh. Like an overnight bag? Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. She's like, you can buy another one. I'm like, sure, no problem. Yeah, just take it. It's fine. Coconut oil is expensive. Well, yeah, I didn't want to say, but yeah, she needs some, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I bought you your favorite cookies. She has a specific... Peak Freen's brand crunch yes, that she's all into. Indian people love those Peak Freen's. She, she dips it in her tea. Yes. So I thought she'd be very excited when I showed her the box. I was like, look, I got your favorite cookies. She's like, put it in the bag. <laughs> and I was like, I go, no, no, I, I brought them so you can eat them now. And she's like, how much was it? And I'm like, 250. She's like, buy another one for your house. Put that one in my bag. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Does she think your house is the grocery store? I'm not sure. And then she was like, she's like, can I borrow a comb? I gave her the comb. She's like, put it in the bag. It's like, okay. She's like, you have an eyebrow pencil? I'm like, sure. Put it in the bag. And then I started to live in fear that everything I gave her, she just wanted to take home. You have to just start saying no if she starts requesting, like, nice stuff. Like, she's like, no. do, you, do you have a husband? <laughs> yep. Put, put him in the, in the bag. bag. She noticed we got a case of glassware, and she's like, oh, I so many glasses you bought so many glasses I said yeah you know my my glasses keep breaking she's like my glasses are also breaking <laughs> and she's staring at Just the box I'm- <laughs> staring at me and i'm like would you like half the glasses she's like put it in the bag <laughs> So how I did this bag. I know this is like a magic it? bag. So here's the thing. It's time for her to leave. And now she's got this massive bag filled with things from my home, which is fine. It's Again. like Mr. Dress Up's tickle trunk. <laughs> yes. And she's like, you know, I need a new laundry basket. And I was like, oh, okay, I can order you one. She's like, just give me this one. So she took the kids clothes. Like your hamper. The hamper. And it's, I mean, it's quite, quite large. And then she, she realized she had so much in the bag that, you know, it wasn't really going to fit the giant hamper. Tell so me she's she like, put the bag in the hamper. She's like, put that bag in the hamper. <laughs> <laughs> so she left my house with a oh giant God. hamper filled with a bag filled with stuff in my home. And I don't, like, I was afraid by the end of it. She's like, CN body, put them in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a minimalist. Yes. <laughs> This is the Pooja and Gurdjieff Show. What gives you the Christmas crankies? <sighs> you know, it's it's the holiday season. I know we're so all... So whoop-dee-doo. <laughs> Sorry, oh, no. every time. Every time. I'm going to have to find another way to say it. Um, <laughs> we're supposed to be merry and bright. Okay, you got nothing good. Uh, and that's what we're all experiencing, right? As we head into the holidays, we're supposed to have that Christmas cheer. However, that doesn't mean that we're not all human And things don't bug us that make us a little cranky. Or maybe you have that person in your family that's a little curmudgeon-y this time of year. Mm -hmm. 
If you've got something that gives you the Christmas crankies, we'd love for you to get it off your chest right here on our show. You can call us 416-872-CHFI, 416-872-2434. For me... I know what it is. It's always been the pressure to get everyone the perfect gift. Mm. It's stressful, and because I'm naturally a procrastinator, Mm. I'm out on December 23rd, like, trying to find everyone the perfect gift, and I know, why do I leave it so... It's just hard to find the time, and then you don't want to just buy someone something that you don't think they're going to love, so... I made the pivot last year, which was the best decision I've ever made. Just get everyone gift cards, and Christmas was much less stressful for me, and I'm going to do it every year now. So <laughs> that cured my Christmas crankies. Uh, yeah, because I was going to say, up until that point, it's like, you sound like you're the problem. It's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes you cranky. I get it. It happens. I think for me, it's like, I don't like lineups, and this time of the oh, year, God, yeah. there's lineups everywhere, and we're all busy, so like, I don't like a lineup. I don't like being put on hold. You put me in a mall, I'm going to be super cranky right now. You will not find me within like 500 meters of a mall Mm. in December. Just not happening. Malls, the parking lots, Mm -hmm. the civility, the lineups. Yes. No, I'm not doing it. Um, Breakfast Television's Frankie Flowers is with us. Frankie, uh, what gives you the Christmas crankies? Yeah, people. People? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of dumb people. You know, you just can't cure stupid sometimes. (laughs) Like this morning, driving into Toronto when they're still on the ground, and, and I'm like, somebody zips by me, I'm like, you're dumb. <laughs> you know, I, I see so much stupidity right now in the world, and some of the stupid things that we do, the stupid things we watch. <laughs> I got to tell you, right, my jib job, that's pretty stupid, but I'm back into that jib jab hole, so I'm loving that, but I'm kind of stupid too. But yeah, people. <laughs> people at the mall, people on the road, people in general. Okay, so Frankie, Grocery what's... store, yeah, those people, the one that bangs you with the cart, and you're like, really, you didn't see me? Oh, okay. But does it, because it is, you know, the holidays, and you have the <laughs> Christmas spirit, um, is there a mantra that maybe you, you tell yourself in those moments when you're Serenity like... Serenity now. Is that it? No. <laughs> Insanity later. <laughs> you know what? People are telling me to meditate, and it, and it's a good idea for about 30 seconds. <laughs> And then I just can't do it anymore. Frankie, stop meditating in the Tim Hortons drive through <laughs> with its 80 people deep. That's not the place or the time. Should we change Frankie Flowers' name to Cranky Frankie? Cranky Flowers. Yes. That's the one. Yes. Uh, okay. I didn't know there was that much. He had to get off his chest. The Pooja and Gurdip Show. I have to get you caught up on what you missed while you were on vacation. Uh, hold on. Let me get my popcorn and my earplugs. <laughs> the Golden Bachelor season finale. And you know that I'm obsessed with this show. I mm-hmm. followed it from the beginning. I try to get you on board. Uh, you didn't I'm return hooked. my texts, Obviously. emails, calls. You just pretended like you didn't know what I was talking about. He's gold. He's a bachelor. What's not to love? <laughs> so Gary Turner, uh, he's in his 70s, was just loved by everyone. And the reason why the show was so successful and did really well was because it was really a chance for you to see love again. Sounds like a bad movie trailer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of them have sort of lost their partners or have gotten divorced. And now they were looking for love again. And it gave a lot of people hope. It was like a really nice, sweet Sweet, sweet show. It's like an encore at a good concert. You think it's done, and then you're walking away, and then they're like, we're back, Donna. <laughs> Love again. That's exactly it. Uh, 6.1 million viewers tuned in, and that Whoa. is a record in the franchise history. It only happened once before, but that was a very controversial season, and that's why it happened in 2021. But just goes to show, you know, when you capture a demo... They're going to tune in. They're going to give you some love. And there were so many cute things that happened, Gurdip. Like, Gary has a hearing aid. Okay. And so everybody knew that. And then when he met one of the women, who was one of the final two, Mm -hmm. on their date, she, like, put her hair behind her ear. And she's like, look what I have. And she had a hearing aid, too. And they Did she were, actually, or was she, she was it like a sympathy hearing aid? No, no, she actually, what? I don't know. Where do you get sympathy but, hearing well, aids listen, from? It, it's an angle, it's a show, she's just trying to like oh. appeal to his sensitivities. No, she already had one. And then they were like, they bonded over that. It was so cute. They were like embracing where they are in life. You know, okay. he, yeah, it was just, it was really, really sweet. All right. Yeah. I Sorry, I just don't believe anything I see on there. <laughs> Why? Because it's all contrived and scripted and you know my line. What's my line again? <laughs> <laughs> you have so many. Which Re- one do I choose from? <laughs> Re- reality TV is to reality what social media is to socializing, which is to say it's just a sliver of the actual thing. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought your line was love is overrated. <laughs> it's time to love again. <laughs> <laughs>
from CHFI Studios. It's the Pooja and Gradeep Show. <laughs> Have you ever been uh, about to leave a party or someone's house a gathering, you know, there's a bunch of shoes by the door, mm. and uh, you go struggle to put on your own shoes, you realize you're wearing someone else's shoes? Well, it's a day to celebrate that today, Pooja. <laughs> it is put your own shoes on day. It's very specific. It's so specific because I have definitely been to parties where it's like a shoes off party. Everybody takes them off at the door and then, you know, you go to leave. I don't, I can't say I've ever put on somebody else's shoes. Uh, Producer Steph, this has happened to you? It wasn't my fault. So oh. I just want to put that out there first. So I had, I had like cheap Uggs. They weren't like the real ones. But everybody had them at you the had, time. You had Fugs. I'd, yeah, I did. Fake Uggs. <laughs> yeah, I did. And so <laughs> I was leaving and we were like one of the last few people to leave and I saw my black Uggs there and I put them on and I, I'm like, these things are comfortable and I was like maybe it's just late whatever I went home and I looked at them again I'm like these are not mine these are real Uggs <laughs> I got real Uggs and I was so excited I was like in that moment I'm like do I keep them it's like how is anyone ever gonna find out and how are you gonna like trace them back right I well mean- there was it was a party for like a bunch of teenagers so uh, they one of them took my boots so I called them and I'm accident. like yeah and I they're was like, like man my Uggs feel really crappy today <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Seriously. <laughs> so I called them and I was just like, I think somebody took my boots and then they they, they were the last ones left at the door, so I assume they were mine. So I'm back. And so this them. does happen. Put your own shoes on day is a real thing for maybe your next holiday party. This is going to be something that now goes through your mind the next time you attend a party like this. It's never happened to me before. No, that has no. never happened to me. And are you also shoes off no matter what? Or are you like... Do you follow the lead of the host? Because I, I don't mind if somebody wears shoes in my home as long as it matches their outfit. Because it's, you know, it's a big deal to plan your whole outfit with your shoes. <laughs> Not yeah, if they're that, clean, if they match their no, outfit. No, no. <laughs> you got to reprioritize your life, Pooch. No, meaning I think it's acceptable. So, wait, so if you ever ask me to take my shoes off at your place, it means it's just like you're just like shading my look? No, no, I said it wrong. If that's the reason why you want to wear them, I understand. <laughs> So that- Pooch's <laughs> parties, half the people have shoes on, half the people have shoes off. As long as it matches, they have mud, you and can I'm wear the them. Style police. <laughs> I'm like, that was not a good choice. (laughs) Hold on, that goes with that. (laughs) My shoes have gravel on the bottom. It's like, it's okay, keep them on. You You look great. (laughs) You need to come to more of my parties. It's really fun. It's a good time. (laughs) The Pooja and Gradeep Show. From 98.1 CHFI. Welcome to Can't Get Gradeep. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 On 98.1. CHFI. Alana from Waterloo is hoping to beat Gertie, and Alana is an on-set tutor. You know, you always hear about child actors who, I guess, still have to go to school while filming. Alana, you're the one who's making them go to school. That's me. That's me. I'm the hard one. <laughs> is it? Do you find it to be a challenging role, or is it just kind of fun because you get to be on set, too? It is so much fun, and everyone I've tutored has honestly been brilliant. So they're huh. hard workers on set, hard workers in school. Oh, I like awesome. that. Alana, who's the most yeah. famous person you've tutored? Are you allowed to say, or is it all like NDA? Uh, well, it's probably NDA, but in the past, I've tutored Zachary Arthur. He's definitely one of my favorites, and uh, and he's an up-and-comer. If you don't know him yet, you will. He's, the, he's on uh, the show Chucky, right? He is on the show Chucky. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Very cool. Now okay. I'm just picturing what like that all looks like. Well, what? Because they're so, probably coming off set and still in costume. A lot or whatever. of fake blood. A lot <laughs> yeah. of fake blood. A lot of dolls. Yep. <laughs> well, so much blood. Yep. <laughs> Gertie, I don't know how you feel, but if you have an onset tutor who's competing against you, I'd be a little I know. afraid. Yeah, and I'm a little tired this morning. I better. I'm very. My senses are tingling. I don't know about today. <laughs> okay. Well, Elena, you know how it works. I'll give you five trivia questions. I'll give the same five trivia questions to Gertie. If you get more right than him, you'll win $100 of his money, and you'll get the bragging rights, of course. So if you're ready to go, let's kick him out. All right, Gurdip. I hate to see you leave, but I love to watch you go. Hey, get out right. of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alana, on-set tutor. Let's see how you do. Recently, Paul Rudd revealed the Marvel diet that he was on to play Ant-Man was horrible and restrictive. And what movie oh. did Paul star with Will Ferrell? Spirited. I don't know. A David Bowie handwritten lyric sheet valued at $126,000 is going up for auction. With what crooner did David Bowie record the Christmas classic, The Drummer Boy? Oh, Frank Sinatra? A recent report out of the U.S. says 
Porch Pirates could put $74 billion in deliveries at risk this holiday season. In what city do the Pirates play baseball? San Francisco. Adam Sandler says his Hanukkah song was originally supposed to be sung by Roseanne Barr, who was hosting SNL the night the song premiered. In the show Roseanne, what was John Goodman's character's first name? Dan. Red Lobster's Endless Shrimp deal will lose the company close to $20 million this year. Lionel Richie had a big hit with the duet Endless Love. With what member of the Supremes did Lionel sing the song? Oh, gosh, Supreme. Um, Aretha Franklin. I have no idea. Okay, Lana, (laughs) let's get Gurdip to come back in and see how he does with the same five questions. Okay. You, you were getting the tingles, you said? Well, listen, I'm just back from vacation. Maybe the tingles is the tequila still in my system. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I don't know about today. Let's go. Okay. Recently, Paul Rudd revealed the Marvel diet he was on to play Ant-Man was horrible and restrictive. Huh. In what movie did Paul star with Will Ferrell? Oh, old school? A David Bowie handwritten lyric sheet valued at $126,000 is going up for auction. With what crooner did David Bowie record the Christmas classic, The Drummer Boy? I don't know. I'm going to say Buble. A recent report out of the U.S. says that Porch Pirates could put $74 billion in deliveries at risk this holiday season. In what city do the Pirates play baseball? Pittsburgh. Adam Sandler says the Hanukkah song was originally supposed to be sung by Roseanne Barr, who was hosting SNL the night the song premiered. In the show Roseanne, what was John Goodman's character's first name? I didn't watch that show, but I think it was Dan. Red Lobster's endless shrimp deal will lose the company $20 million this year. Lionel Richie had a big hit with duet Endless Love. With what member of the Supremes did Lionel sing the song? No idea. Tina Turner. I don't know. Okay. Elena, this was a tough one. (laughs) You got one out of five. Radeep, you got two out of five. Hold on. Oh. Two's more than one, right? (laughs) Han, you're the tutor. Let me ask you, Elena. Two's more than one, right? Uh, uh, Yeah. 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 I was dying a slow. I was dying a slow death. Oh, we all were. <laughs> these, these pirates were, makes no sense. This, <laughs> <laughs> so just to recap, what you got wrong: uh, Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell starred in Anchorman together. Oh, Anchorman. right. Obviously. Yes. Duh. Uh, and it was he was in that. Bing Crosby is the one who sang with David Bowie. Oh. The only Crosby I know is Sydney. Better one. <laughs> you were both correct with uh, Dan on Roseanne and Diana Ross was the member of the Supremes who sang Endless Love. Well, I'm... Alana, you weren't able to beat Gurdip, and you know what that means. Which I'm sweating, and it tastes like spicy margarita. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> Hospital, please. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. Listen to Pooja and Gurdeep live weekday mornings from 5 to 9. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's perfect music mix.